Eighty-year-old Nora Tomosime cannot hold back her joy for the new life she is now leading, thanks to the initiative by Care International in Uganda to restore the integrity of the life of the Batwa communities evicted from their natural habitats in the early 1990s without compensation. When we left the forest, we had almost nothing. So, we used banana and tree leaves to build makeshift houses. But we used to suffer greatly whenever it rained or during extreme cold conditions. That is why I cannot hold back my joy and dance in appreciation for the people who have built this house for me. Surely, you saved us the misery. Tumusime is one of the 3,000 people, the bulk of whom, Batwa, that Care International in Uganda and her partners supported to transform their livelihood through the HEAL project. HEAL, an acronym for health, education, agriculture and land, was designed to heal the emotional, psychosocial and physical wounds that they have suffered since their eviction from Echuya Forest, Bwindi Impenetrable Forest and Mugahinga Mountain Forest in southwestern Uganda's Kabale and Chisoro districts. The forests have since been gazetted into a national forest park. <coughs> it is a long story, told by different people differently. But all that is history. The bottom line is, the Batwa, like everybody else, have a right to a decent life. A move that has caused Care International in Uganda and her partners to intervene through health, education, agriculture and land as the major pillars the Hill Project is fronting to build the livelihood base of these very vulnerable communities. The project was designed to consolidate the successes so far registered in transforming the livelihoods of these communities through previous interventions by Care International in Uganda. <laughs> so the focus this time round was to empower the most marginalized Batwa communities, notably women and girls with these rights, so that they too are able to participate equitably in decision making at the household and community levels. With funds from Care Norway, Care International in Uganda worked in partnership with national civil society organizations, local community-based organizations, and local governments to implement the project. Ubudu is a united organization for the Batkwa in Uganda, and it has a membership of all the Batkwa. So it is a strategic in a way that anything to do with the Batkwa, it can also give a support in terms of working, in terms of mobilization, in terms of uh, establishing the database for the Batkwa and also monitoring their development and performance indicators. King of their area is mainly in social accountability, monitoring of the performance of, the, of these other institutions, and they have that strong capacity in mobilization, in forming groups, in empowering people, leadership training. AICM is also working alongside livelihood, is also working around social empowerment. Whereas BMCT has been there for quite long and it has got the capacity in terms of resources to implement agriculture related activities, to mobilize the VSLA and support them. So we are building on those strengths and building their capacity to handle different components that would lead to entire empowerment process for the Abatqua people. Two, we are also looking at life after the project. The partners with or without care, they have the capacity to handle both social empowerment, livelihood, and also monitoring their development and performance indicators. The entry point in disseminating all these interventions revolved around the Village Saving and Loan Associations, VSLA in short. This is an informal financial model through which a group of self-selected people come together to pool their money and then own lend the accumulated savings to members who wish to invest or address social problems. The scheme has the welfare fund component from which members borrow to meet their social needs and then the investment fund which is borrowed to invest in income generating projects that can enable the person to pay back the loan with an interest as agreed upon by the entire association. 
it's a good financial alternative because considering where the Batwa people have been living next to the protected areas, sometimes the facilities are limited including the financial services, whether they are banks, microfinance institutions, even the circles. So when you look at the VSLA methodology itself, we are looking at them having an alternative by saving and borrowing and doing any other activity financially. Then at the same time, it is a very good mobilization strategy. These days, all the support that is coming, especially from the government, goes through organized groups. So currently we have 104 VSLA groups in both districts of um, Chisoro and Kabale. We have always invited in expert people, technical people from the sub-county, from uh, even the districts to come and give them this information, whether it is health, whether it is agriculture, whether it is education. We are using VSLA as our entry point. This is Bachiga Batwa Kagano Village Saving and Loan Association in Nyamiyaga Village, Kabale District. Basijirenda Rosa, one of the nine Batwa members in this group, was elected the money counter after realizing that she was able to responsibly handle the group money. I feel proud to be the cashier of this group, especially because it has both the Batwa and the Bachiga. Before this project, it was almost impossible to sit and plan for anything with the Bachiga. They used to undermine us, but now, through this scheme, they have realized that we are as good as them. Through this VSLA, Basijirenda saved 20,000 shillings in the first saving cycle and accumulated almost twice as much in the second saving cycle. Using that money, I acquired saucepans, plates and some nice clothes. Mukundu by another Mutwa member in this group, is also grateful to the VSLA scheme, especially the social fund component, which allows her to borrow money and meet her urgent social needs, and then pay back at a convenient time and without interest. For example, the 20,000 shillings she is paying back now helped her to pay for her treatment when she fell sick a month ago. They have also learned how to invest their money if they borrow and buy something like a goat. When it produces, they will earn more income from it when they sell it. And then they are also looking at the manure that goat produces to make um, manure for their gardens. So when they harvest, eat and sell some and then keep also seed so that they are able to repay. And most of them have been investing and repaying. So we are happy they are looking into another direction apart from consumption. We have attained the empowerment that will continually facilitate our development is the message in their song, reaffirming that the health education, agriculture, land rights, advocacy knowledge and skills they have acquired throughout the two years of the project is critical for their sustainable development. Indeed, all these components complement each other to offer a wholesome package to the targeted community. At the project level, however, each of them had a specific goal to achieve as we now explore. According to the baseline survey that preceded the Hill project, there are 529 Batwa households in Chisoro and Kabale, but only half of them had land. The rest were just squatters. These could neither build permanent houses nor cultivate their own food. Their only means of survival was to offer their labor to landlords in exchange for food. This placed them in a very serious food insecurity situation, making them very vulnerable to all the associated challenges. So, through this land rights and shelter component, 
Care International in Uganda worked closely with Windy Mugahinga Conservation Trust and other stakeholders in the two districts to secure land for 55 very vulnerable communities, amongst them the elderly and mothers with young children. <laughs> to build houses for them, the project was cautious to capture all the cultural and contextual ingredients for community acceptance. They are like the homes of other villagers. We built a house, a kitchen, a pit latrine, put up a dry rack for utensils. We are also giving them technical backstopping or technical training to help them understand their role in a community and to their own families. They can now understand how to live comfortably in a community and how to sustain their livelihood itself. For these and many other Batua that had land without land agreements, the Hill project supported them to secure the agreements. Now with the land, the Batua have a sense of security and they can now plan for their survival needs ahead of time. Despite being a motua, I now own land. I can rear animals, grow pumpkin, Irish potato and beans on a fairly bigger scale. I can even grow perennial crops such as bananas. And because I use manure such as animal droppings and kitchen refuse, the yield is high, so my home is food secure and my children always eat as much as they want. The project implementers also advocated for more land from the local government, and several sub-counties have since realized the need to offer land to these vulnerable members within their community in a bid to support their development efforts. Mr. and Mrs. Mugisha are one of the 28 households that benefited from this arrangement in Chahi and Nyarusiza sub-counties in Chisoro district. Under the agriculture sub-component, the project has improved the food and income security of 865 households. The household members belong to VSLA groups that were linked to agricultural service providers such as National Agricultural Advisory Services, NADS, and the local government community development departments. In response to the group demands, the NADS extension teams have been training the members in a wide range of modern farming practices using the farmer field school approach through which the members experiment and observe as they learn. The experiments were cited on land hired with project funds, but at the end of the farming season, the participating members would harvest and share the produce. So this motivated many to be active and therefore easily picked the practical tips on the different aspects of farming. Today, a reasonable number of Batwa are using soil and water conservation technologies, along with other modern farming techniques, which has improved their farm productivity. We learn to plant Irish in lines and to space them adequately. We also apply manure and weed the crop in time. To conserve soil and water, we dug trenches commonly known as Fanyaju and Fanyakin. Our harvest is great. The Mugishas can now afford to eat at least two meals a day. They even have a surplus for sale to raise money to save in their VSLA group. That is how they manage to accumulate money to construct this house. My colleagues helped me to mobilize the poles that I needed to roof this house and then we bought iron sheets using the savings we had accumulated in our first saving cycle. We also bought goats and chicken, and I'm sure if we continue saving, we shall easily devolve. Other people have not only learned proper farming skills, but also the power of collective action. So, on top of their individual subsistence farms, they decided to pull money and hire land for their development projects. No doubt, with improved food and income security, the Batua can now afford to live a relatively decent life.
good health is key for the success of any development effort. So, under this health subcomponent, the project has empowered the members with proper hygiene and sanitation.